In this session, we're going to look at data quality assurance. So what is it? It is a system for anticipating and preventing data issues. And it can be done before and during data acquisition. And why do it? It's the most effective way to ensure the quality of data. Prevention is better than cure. So it's really worthwhile to think hard about quality assurance. Um, if data is collected well, it limits the amount of quality control that is needed. And yeah, data quality control can waste a lot of time. Um, and high quality data means increased reliability, accuracy and credibility. So to give an overview, we're going to look at acquiring primary data. So design, testing, training and collecting. And then we'll look at acquiring secondary data. Primary data is data that is collected by the researchers themselves. Um, the quality of this data depends on how it is collected. So it's really important to plan ahead and spend adequate time developing and testing data co collection tools. Um, don't rush the process. A good place to start with ensuring quality is by defining standards. Um, what system are you going to use for variable names to ensure they are consistent and useful? Um, think about units of measurement. How are they going to be captured? How are they going to be consistent? Um, do you need multiple options for units? For example, if you're asking a farmer how many potatoes they harvested, maybe one will want to tell you in kilograms and maybe another will want to tell you in bags. So then you'd need to know how many kilograms are in a bag so that you can standardize these responses. And think about data types as well. For example, should you be using categorical variables or free text? Should a respondent have to choose from a list of options for a question or is it more appropriate to um, let them answer it themselves. Using pre-designed indicators, there are actually many indicators and ways of collecting data for them that have already been designed. Um, they've been tested and approved by communities of users, so they can be really useful for ensuring data quality. Um, one example is Romus. They have a set of curated questions for characterizing rural households, and you can use those questions in your own survey. So I'm going to look at some ODK specific tips for ensuring data quality. Um, if you use another tool, there will probably be ways of doing similar things. And if you're not familiar with ODK, we actually have a great um, introduction to ODK playlist available on YouTube. So I'd really recommend looking into that. So constraints, constraints can be really useful. Um, so they're used to ensure that uh, incorrect answers are not entered. Um, in the first example here, we can see that the question is, how many days a week do you eat fruit? Um, so there are only seven days in the week. So the answer must be between zero and seven. And you can see that that has been added into the constraint 
says that the answer must be greater than or equal to zero or less than or equal to seven. Um, another way to use constraints is by using um, rejects. Um, in this example, um, we're asking for a participant's ID and the format should be four letters or numbers, an underscore and six numbers. So to ensure that the ID is entered correctly, uh, you can use a constraint for that. Required fields are great for um, avoiding missing values for essential information. Um, you can see in this example here, both of these questions are required. So that means the survey can't progress without an answer for these questions. Using select instead of text. So when the possible answers are limited and known, um, it's good to use selections, either select one or select multiple. Um, instead of enter in text. Um, and then an option for other can be included as well to capture um, an option like not considered when designing the survey. And then that can be followed up with a specify other question. So in this example here, where do you buy ecological food? Um, it's a select multiple, you can see the options below specialized shops, supermarkets, local markets or other. And if the answer is other, there's the follow-up question there, please specify other. Hints. So hints can be used to give extra instructions on using a form. And so this can help with the quality of the data um, in this example. There is a question, where do you or your household usually source vegetables? And there's a hint for the enumerator, do not read the don't know option. Um, acknowledgements can be used to confirm that information has been entered correctly. Um, so we're back to the ID example again. Now we have an acknowledge question. So this will display the ID that has been entered back to the enumerator and they will need to verify before continuing. So that's a good place to catch any errors that may have been made, any typos. Um, relevant, so questions or groups of questions can be skipped based on responses to previous questions. In this example, we ask, do you buy ecological food at the market? And the follow-up question is, what do you think of the prices of the ecological food sold at the market? And we obviously wouldn't want to ask anyone about the prices if they don't actually buy them at the market. So here in the relevant column, we have made it so that it's only asked to those that answered yes to buy in ecological food at the market. Metadata. Um, there are options for metadata um, which help um, with understanding how the data is being collected and they are captured automatically without the need for input. Um, you can capture the date of the interview, start and end times, 
the device ID, username, email, phone number of the enumerator. Um, this is good for carrying out quality checks. Um, one example is by looking at the start and end times, this will show how long an enumerator is spending filling in a form and if they're filling it in too quick, that's something worth looking into then. So where possible, um, the data collection tool should be translated into the language of the respondent. Um, the terminology should be understandable. So this reduces the risk of questions being misinterpreted and answered incorrectly. Um, ODK as well is actually great for languages as you can include multiple languages side by side in the form and when it's being used the appropriate language can be selected. So paper questionnaires. Um, if you're using paper questionnaires, um, it must be possible for them to be converted into data structures that make sense. Um, other things to ensure quality, it's good to keep a tally of numbers completed. Check for consistency. Um, these questionnaires should be approved and signed by a supervisor. And then data entry should be done with a form that has checks to make sure that everything is done well. So moving on now to testing. Uh, testing data quality tools, data collection tools is crucial for data quality. Um, test, check results, find any possible issues, make improvements and repeat. And always test in the field. A tool that you think works well by testing in the office, may not work well in the field where the tool is actually going to be used. So adjustments may be needed. Training is also really important. Everyone working with the data on the project should be trained. Um, Quality issues can occur with even the most perfect data collection tools if the people using them don't know how to use them properly and haven't tested them themselves in the field. So they, everyone should be familiar with the tool, familiar with the logic, with where to skip questions and so on. They should know how to create conditions for responses to answer sensitive questions, truthfully. For example, making sure that the interview can't be overheard. And yeah, they should know what to do in all circumstances. So data quality checks. So while the data is being collected, it's important to run quality control checks. Um, don't wait until you have all the data to start looking at it because issues can still be caught and adjustments can be made. Um, another example of carrying out checks is by having follow-up interviews. So surveys can be monitored by selecting a few respondents for a follow-up phone interview. Um, to do this, a phone number and consent must be collected. 
And then in the follow-up interview, you can verify that they were interviewed, you can repeat a few questions from the survey and compare answers to check for quality. So secondary data is data that has already been collected. Um, it's important to ensure that secondary data is data that you can trust, especially when searching on the internet. You can't always assume good quality. So some things to look at to determine the quality of secondary data before diving in and carrying out data quality control. Um, examine the source. So think about who collected the data. Was it collected by your organization or an external organization? If external, how reputable or trustworthy are they? Maybe it's a national statistics office or maybe it's someone you've never heard of before. Um, look at why it was collected, when it was collected and how it was collected. Um, and also you want to understand any restrictions or limitations of use. Um, you want to determine if that data can be used for the purposes you intend to use it for. It's good to study the documentation to be sure you understand exactly what the data is showing. And also look at consistency and think about how it compares to other data. <laughs> 